Hello, today I'll discuss about the histology of the stomach. Like other part of the gastrointestinal system, the wall of the stomach contains the mucosa, the submucosa, muscularis externa, and the serosa. So the mucosa has three components, epithelium, lamina propria, muscularis mucosa. The epithelium is simple columnar epithelium. This is a change from the esophagus. In the esophagus, we have the stratified squamous non keratinous epithelium. In the stomach, we have the simple columnar epithelium. Lamina propria contains the cardiac glands, fundi gland, and pyloric gland. Our stomach has the cardiac end with the pyloric end and the fundus and also the body of the stomach. So the gland is a little different from this one side to another side. The muscularis mucosa is a smooth muscle. It has inner circular layer, outer longitudinal layer. And in some places we have also another outer circular layer that is not always constant. These two are constant in our circular outer longitudinal. We may also get another inconstant outer circular layer in the muscularis mucosa. Then we'll get the submucosa that is underneath the muscularis mucosa. The lamina propria is a loose connective tissue. Submucosa is a dense connective tissue and muscularis mucosa is certainly smooth muscle. Then we'll get another set of smooth muscle. The muscular is externa. It has three layer, inner oblique muscle layer, middle circular, outermost longitudinal muscle. In other part of the gastrointestinal system, we have two layer, not inner oblique layer, but here we have another layer inner oblique, middle circular, and outermost longitudinal layer. And these layer are prominent along the lesser curvature of the stomach. Outside the muscle, we have the serosa. These are all smooth muscle. Outside the muscle, we have the serosa because stomach is an intraperitoneal structure. So it is not adventitia, it is serosa. It is the outside, it is lined by the simple squamous epithelium, that is the mesothelium, that is the visceral peritoneum. Okay, we got the layers of the stomach. Now we'll go to the stomach description. The stomach is the most dilated part of the gastrointestinal system. It forms and process the ingested food into chyme. Chyme is the food that is half digested. It is added with that of the hydrochloric acid. It has four parts, cardia, fundus, body, and pylorus. By the py pylorus, it is going to the duodenum. By the cardia, it is connected to the esophagus. Upper part of the body is the fundus, rugi, what are the rugi? These are folds of mucosa and submucosa. When the stomach is distended with food, then rugi disappears. Okay, so we got rugi, folds of mucosa and submucosa. Invagination of the epithelium lining into the mucosa forms the gastric pit, and these gastric pits are numerous and they increase the surface area of the stomach, the luminal surface area of the stomach. Five to seven gastric glands of lamina propria empty into the bottom of each gastric pit. Gastric glands are tubular glands and they are present in the lamina propria. Lamina propria is a part of the mucosa. Lamina propria is a loose connective tissue. Gastric pits are 
shallow in the cardiac region but deep in the pyloric region. So this is a slide of stomach in low magnification. So from here to here we have the mucosa. This is submucosa and this is the muscularis externa oblique muscle layer, circular muscle layer and we'll get the longitudinal muscle layer. Outside that we'll get the serosa line by the simple squamous epithelium or visceral peritoneum. This is the mucosa from here to here. Mucosa it has three component lining epithelium that is simple columnar epithelium. Then we get the lamina propria that contains all these glands. Okay, that is the lamina propria. Then we'll get the muscularis mucosa. Okay, this is a depression of rugi. Rugi. So our feet are present here. These are the pits. Here are the pits. Surface epithelium in vaginate to form the gland in the lamina propria. So lamina propria is started with the gastric gland. This all our gastric gland in the lamina propria and we have the pit here. Pits are present here. Okay. And this is the submucosa. This is moderately dense irregular connective tissue. Lamina propria is a loose connective tissue. Then we have the muscularis mucosa. We discussed it has two layer in our circular outer longitudinal layer. We may get another circular layer outside in some places in a scattered way. This is the oblique muscle layer. Then we'll get the circular muscle layer. Then we'll get the longitudinal muscle layer. This is the serosa. It contains connective tissue plus lined by the visceral peritoneum or mesothelium. It may contain adipose tissue. It is not shown here. These are the blood vessels lined by the simple squamous epithelium. We call it endothelium here. It also contains lymphatics, the submucosa also contains lymphatic. We may even get some lymph node in some of the slides. Okay, so this is the stomach. This is the cardiac end. This is the fundus, body of the stomach pylorus, pyloric sphincter. Okay, the gland here is very much tall gland here in the pyloric region. Okay, this is the junction between the esophagus and the stomach. We look here, this is the stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus. This is columnar epithelium. This is the, the esophagogastric junction. Okay, we'll also get some esophageal cardiac gland here. This is a mucous gland here. Okay, there's a lamina propria here. Okay, so these are the muscle layer in the wall of the stomach here, the outer longitudinal muscle layer in the middle circular layer inside the oblique muscle. This is the this is the submucosal layer and this is the muscular mucosa. Muscularis mucosa, some fiber may go to the to the glandular area to support the glands. Okay, so we got that. And the submucosa, mucosa is very vascular, a lot of blood vessels, vein, artery, lymphatics are present there. Okay, and also muscular extension go to the gland. This is the gastric pit here. This is the gastric pit, like this is the gastric pit here. Okay. And this is the muscular is mucosa in the lower part, it is not it, it will be outside our screen. Okay, these are the gastric glands. Okay, submucosa, dense irregular collagenous connective tissue has rich vascular and lymphatic network that supplies and drains the vessels of the lamina propria. Submucosa contains submucosal plexus called the masonous plexus. These are parasympathetic in function. 
they are a part of the enteric nervous system they're essential for the peristaltic movement of the intestine and also stomach okay and these are derived from the derived embryologically mesner's plexus is coming out of the of the neural crest cell okay. here what are the glands present in our what are the cells present in the glands we have the mucus neck cell stem cell also called the regenerative cell from the stem cell other cells are produced by a turn of five to seven days parietal cell produces hydrochloric acid and gastric intrinsic factor this is very important for the absorption of vitamin b12 okay without vitamin b12 we may have pernicious anemia or megaloblastic anemia plus degeneration of the posterior column of the spinal cord and also part of the cerebellum due to vitamin b12 deficiency that is essential for us and intensive factor from the parietal cell help to absorb the vitamin b12 by means of the ileum or the small intestine terminal part of small intestine we have the chief cell that produces pepsinogen renin gastric lipase pepsinogen will be converted into pepsin it is essential for protein digestion B and E S cell that produces endocrine, paracrine, neurocrine hormone. We have multiple types of DNA E S cell, diffuse neuroendocrine system cell, also called A P E U D cell. Okay, amine precursor uptake decarboxylase, also called argentifil cell, depending on its staining character. Okay, we got that. Okay, here is the surface lining cell, simple columnar epithelium, regenerative cell or stem cell, it produces other cell, mucus neck cell, and we have the we have the gymogenic cell or chief cell with the D and E S cell. It may produce histamine, it may produce endocrine substance, it may produce the heparin. Okay, so it may produce the local hormone like cholecystokinin or gastrin. Usually one type of cell produce one type of substance. Okay, these are the gastric glands here. Again, surface mucous cell, mucous neck cell, parietal cell. We may have also around the, the, the stem cells are present there. Parietal cell produces what? Hydrochloric acid and the intensive factor. Chief cell produces pepsinogen. Okay, D and E S cell produces endocrine, paracrine. Or neurocrine substances. Okay, musculus external has three layer: innermost oblique layer, middle circular layer, outer longitudinal layer. We have myenteric plexus, also called orifex plexus. That is also parasympathetic collection of nerve fibers, and that is also derived from neural crest cell. It is also associated with peristaltic function. Cirrhosa invest entire stomach it contains loose connective tissue and supported outside by simple squamous epithelium or visceral peritoneum okay so these are the viva question what are the layers of the stomach we discussed that component of mucosa three component one is the epithelium then lamina propria then muscularis mucosa okay we discussed this all so i request everyone to read this all okay and i will ask everyone to go through the textbook and please uh, look at your slide fix the slide and get help from your demonstrator so i like to conclude my discussion about the stomach histology if you have any question please feel free to ask me and please support my channel Please subscribe me. Have a nice day. Bye now.